my name is Krista Pettiford and I'm here to encourage you in every season of your calling. Today I want to talk to you about something that I think we all go through and that is a season of waiting. I think that we all go through seasons of waiting and I want to share with you how I have learned to wait well. I say learned because I didn't always know how to wait for God. When we are waiting for God to do something for us, to fulfill his promise, for him to answer a prayer or bring to pass a prophetic word, what do you do? I know that it can be hard to wait, but I have found four things that really help me. And I have seen God answer prayers and fulfill prophetic words, but there are still some things a lot of things that I am waiting on God to fulfill. But I know that he promised me. I know that he spoke to me. And so waiting is part of the process of receiving from God. Sometimes God does something immediately when he does a miracle. But when he brings to pass his word in your life, there's often a due season, a set time for it to come to pass. So we get prophetic words and then there's a process. But what often happens is people begin to feel down. People begin not to believe and it be, you begin to we begin to um, pause and to wonder if God actually spoke to us because we didn't count on it taking as long as it did because we read the Bible and we think that our stories are going to happen in the amount of time that we read um, it, um, as quickly as it takes us to read the stories that we um, read in the Bible. But the truth is that those people went through years like Abraham and Sarah, David becoming king. People went through years. They went through their process, Joseph and Jacob and um, <clears throat> Joshua and even Moses. There is a process. And so it behooves all of us to learn how to wait on God because when we don't, we get ahead of him in the process and we end up in wilderness seasons. We end up wondering and God doesn't want that for you or me. He wants us to learn how to endure. He wants us to learn how to wait on the Lord and be patient for him. And so this is what I want to talk to you about today. Let me know what season you are in. Are you in a waiting season? Are you in a warring season? Are you in a wilderness season? Are you in a welcoming what God has spoken to you season? Are you in a walking in it season? Are you walking in the fullness of your promise? And if you are, know that God has more for you. So even if you're already walking in certain things, God has more for you to do. So this will help you whatever season that you are in. And I will go over those other seasons separately. I think I've talked about them during prayer, um, Saturday morning prayer, but I will go deeper into each one in short dives later on. So here are some things that I have learned and I wrote some things down and I just have four things that I want to share with you today. And the first one is to realize that you do not have to hold your breath in a waiting season. You can enjoy your life while you're waiting for God to answer your prayer. Sometimes we sit there and we get stuck waiting for God to answer our prayer and we don't move forward in other areas of our lives. I remember the Lord telling me that what I was asking him for in prayer was done. It was complete and that I could focus on other areas of my life. I would have to believe him for certain things, but I didn't need to get fixated on them because that wasn't going to help me or help them to come uh to pass faster. I wasn't going to make him fulfill his will just because that's all I'm focused on. But he said, enjoy your life. Focus on other things while I work this out because there's a due season and a set time. So the number one thing that you need to do is not to be fixated asking God when, God, when, when, God, when. You have to, what I want to get to number two 
is to believe that you have received what you asked for in prayer from God. And that's out of Mark 11, 23 and 24, that when you ask believing without doubt in your heart, and we go through phases where we have to clean out our heart to the place where we can believe him fully. And when you get to that place and you're believing God fully, when you get to that place in your faith and you're believing God fully, sometimes it comes right away. Sometimes there's things that are hard that we have to keep on pressing in, in our faith to believe God. But when you get to that faith, that place, then stand on it and begin to thank God in your prayer life. Don't just keep on asking God like he didn't hear you, like he hadn't spoken to you because the word in John 5, 14, I believe it says 5, 14, this is the confidence that we have in him, that we, if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we have asked, we know that we have the petition granted to us. And so act like you have it. Now I'm not talking about naming and claiming, act like you have that you act like you trust God. Do you have the courage? Do you have the bravery? Do you have brave faith enough to trust God that he said it and to thank him in prayer? Thank him when you're in prayer. Believe him. Stop asking for it if he said he answered you. Stop asking for it if he spoke it to you prophetically or you found it in his word and tell him that you receive it and thank him for it and then trust him for his timing. That's one thing that you can do is stop stop praying from a place of trying to get something from God and pray from a place of having already received and begin to thank him for his word that he has promised you in his written word and for the prophetic words that he has spoken to you and the promises. Maybe there's a promise for your family or something that you call you pray to God for where he's a God, he's a God that answers prayer today. So it's not just what you find in his word, but it's what he speaks to you in the quietness and the still small voice in your heart. And also when people bring you a prophetic word and you latch on it to it and say, that's for me, then you have a right to believe that if it lines up with the will of God for your life. And you know it's in his will when you trust him and you read his word and you can align it with what he's spoken. And it's not contrary to scripture, but it's in line with his principles. And so you have a right to claim his promises. And Romans 4, chapter uh, verse 17 through 21, we know that it talks about how Abraham um, who was who couldn't have children, his wife was barren, but he became the father of many nations because he believed God according to what was spoken over him. And he began to speak this over himself. And that is not what caused it to happen. In a way it did because he aligned with God, but God had already spoken it, but he gave glory to God. He took his faith to another level. He began to believe God that he received he began to speak like God and then he began to give glory to God that so his faith stopped wavering. So he wouldn't so the Bible says he didn't waver in faith but gave glory to God, considering him faithful who had promised. For considering that he was able to perform that which he had spoken. And so give glory to God even when you feel down. And so that's number two. Number three leads right into this. Don't speak against your promise. Do not complain about it. The Bible says all through Numbers and Exodus and Deuteronomy that the children of Israel complained. They murmured and they complained against God. And then we go to Psalm 106, 25 through 26. And it talks about um, the psalmist recalls what happened in the wilderness. They fell in the wilderness because they murmured and complained against God. And then they died in the wilderness. Do not complain. That's why it's so important that after you come out of your prayer time, after you bless God and you're shouting and you're giving him thanks in praise, during your prayer time, you know, we're so mighty and it's shandoro boko. So I know maybe let me just talk about myself, but then things happen and all these temporal things and are going on and it's hard to stay with that. 
not to speak against the promise. So one thing that you can do is you can be silent. If you can't say anything, if you can't bring your faith up, then the least you can do is not speak against it, not complain about it, not talk about your circumstances in the ne negative way. Just say, well, bless God, he's working on that. Don't take the opportunity to complain. Well, how is this or how is that? How is your husband? How is your children? How is your job going? How is How are things working out for you? And then you just start complaining and then you say at the end, well, but I'm trusting God. No, don't do that. Just say, I'm just believing God. Just end it so that you're not always murmuring and complaining. You don't want to die in the wilderness um, spiritually or let your, um, your promise die in the wilderness. So maybe you're not going to die physically in the wilderness, although some people do waiting for their promise. But maybe you the promise dies the hope that you have it goes away because you can you're doing more complaining than speaking in faith and if you don't know how to do that or you don't you don't want to speak in front of everybody because you shouldn't share your promise with everybody you shouldn't share your dreams and share your intimate uh, prayers and things with everyone so you can just be silent and so don't speak against the promise um and don't speak against other people ephesians 429 says let no evil or corrupt communication come out of your mouth but that which is good to the use of edifying that it may impart grace to the hearers speak good of people speak well of people i'm sorry i thought my camera hadn't gone out and then finally Number four, continue to do good. Galatians 6, 9 says, do not grow weary while doing good because if you don't faint, um, you will reap in due season. That's what we talked about at the beginning. There's a due season. So while you're waiting, continue to do good. And then the next verse says, um, do good, especially to those of the household of God. And so at the beginning, I talked about realizing that you don't have to hold your breath you don't have to put your life on hold that you can enjoy your life right now while you're waiting on god you can enjoy the season that you are in even if you haven't entered into the thing that you're waiting on god for yet but doing good for others is different so you want to sow good that you would reap good you want to take every occasion and buy up every opportunity to do good now i'm not talking about doing works and wearing yourself out i'm talking about blessing others you might be it might be a secret blessing it might be some place where you can step in and you can honor somebody do good because when you do good good comes back to you and as we minister we're ministered onto and so when you begin to give out and you're not always thinking about yourself and when god wins in and you're doing things you're staying busy that's what god was saying about focusing on other things not just enjoying my life there's a lot of things i like to do I like to go hiking i like to eat i like to cook healthy i like to do things that's me but how am i giving to other people while i'm waiting and so i hope this that this encouraged you and if you were encouraged please let me know which one of these most spoke to you and please like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe and come back next week. I'm going to talk about the other four seasons, what to do when you're in your wilderness season, what to do when you are in your receiving or you're welcoming the word season, how you can capture that and protect your word, what to do when you are in your walking it out in your warring season and what to do when you're in your walking it in its season and how these things continue to happen for us and so god bless you again please subscribe if you haven't thumbs this video up and share it with someone god bless you until next time